Pleural effusion. Pleural effusion is an accumulation of fluid in the pleural cavity between the lining of the lungs and the thoracic cavity, that is the visceral and parietal pleurae. Normally, no more than 10 to 15 ml of serous, relatively acellular, clear fluid lubricates the pleural surface. Symptoms typically only develop with large, that is more than 300 ml effusions. Increased accumulation of pleural fluid is called pleural effusion. It can be either transidates or exudates. Hydrothorax. Effusion is a transidate. Note that congestive heart failure is the most common cause of bilateral hydrothorax. Pleuritis. An exudate characterized by protein content greater than 30 grams per liter and often inflammatory cells. Hemorrhagic pleuritis. Malignant effusions, which are large and frequently bloody, plus cytologic examination revealing the malignant cells. Feature. Pathophysiology of transudative is increased capillary hydrostatic pressure that is increased capillary wedge pressure and a decreased capillary oncotic pressure. Exudative is increased capillary permeability, example due to inflammation. Protein content in transudative is low, less than 3 grams per deciliter, and in exudative is high, more than 3 grams per deciliter. Glucose in transudative is same as in blood. In exudative, it is low, that is less than 60 mg per deciliter because leukocytes and bacteria mobilize glucose in the pleural effusion, decreasing its concentration. 30 to 59 mg per deciliter suggests malignant effusion, tuberculosis pleurisy, empyema, pneumonia, esophageal rupture, or lupus pleuritis. Less than 30 mg per deciliter suggests rheumatoid pleurisy or empyema. Specific gravity for transudative is low, less than 1.015, and it is high for exudative, which is more than 1.018. LDH is low for transudative which is less than two-thirds of the upper limit of normal serum LDH. It is high in exudative with pleural fluid LDH more than two-thirds the upper limit of normal serum LDH. Very high LDH levels, for example, more than 1,000 international units per liter suggest empyema, malignancy, or rheumatoid effusion. Effusion LDH or serum LDH ratio. It is less than 0.6 in transudative and more than 0.6 in exudative. The cells in transudative are few, mesothelial, and cellular debris. There are many inflammatory cells in exudative. Transudate is usually clear and has a decreased cell count and has low levels of protein, albumin, and LDH. Exudate typically appears cloudy, has an increased cell count, and has high levels of protein, albumin, and LDH. Think meat to memorize causes of pulmonary effusion with decreased glucose content. M for malignancy, E for empyema, A for arthritis or rheumatoid pleurisy, and T for tuberculosis. Note that pleural fluid with a bloody appearance suggests a malignant etiology or hemothorax. Causes of transudative pleural effusion Congestive heart failure, cirrhosis, peritoneal dialysis, pulmonary embolization, nephrotic syndrome, superior vena cava obstruction, myxedema, urinothorax. Causes of pleural exudates are as follows. Microbial invasion through either direct extension of a pulmonary infection or blood-borne seeding 
which is suppurative pleuritis or empyema, bacterial infections are the most common cause. Examples are pneumonia, paranemonic effusion, tuberculosis, pleural empyema. Neoplasms. Approximately 25% of pleural effusions are associated with malignancies, such as lung carcinoma, metastatic neoplasms to the lung or pleural surface, mesothelioma, etc. Pulmonary embolism. In approximately 80% of pleural effusions associated with pulmonary embolisms, the fluid is an exudate, suggesting a pulmonary infarction. In approximately 20% of cases, the fluid is a transudate. Viral pleuritis, gastrointestinal disorders such as esophageal perforation, pancreatitis, abdominal abscesses, diaphragmatic hernia, abdominal surgery, liver transplant. Collagen vascular diseases, such as rheumatoid arthritis, systemic lupus erythematosus, drug-induced lupus, Sojourn syndrome, Wegener's granulomatosis, miscellaneous, such as coronary bypass, asbestosis, sarcoidosis, uremia, Mace syndrome, yellow nail syndrome, previous thoracic surgery, pancreatitis, hemothorax, chylothorax, pseudochylothorax. Note that transudates and serous exudates usually are reabsorbed without residual effects if the inciting cause is controlled or remits. Fibrinous, hemorrhagic, and suppurative exudates leads to fibrous organization yielding adhesions or fibrous pleural thickenings that sometimes undergo calcification. Light's criteria to differentiate exudates from transudate. According to the traditional Light's criteria rule, if at least one of the following three criteria, that is component tests of the rule, is fulfilled, the fluid is defined as an exudate. Pleural fluid protein or serum protein ratio greater than 0.5 or pleural fluid LDH or serum LDH ratio greater than 0.6 or pleural fluid LDH greater than two-thirds the upper limits of the laboratory's normal serum LDH. Symptoms Patients with a small pleural effusion that is less than 300 ml are often asymptomatic as we already discussed earlier that the normal pleural fluid volume is approximately 10 ml. Symptoms typically only develop with large, more than 300 ml effusions. The characteristic symptoms are dyspnea due to compression of the lungs and caudal displacement of the diaphragm, pleuretic chest pain, indicates inflammation of the parietal pleura, dry, non-productive cough, can be productive if concurrent pneumonia is present. Symptoms of the underlying disease, for example, fever and empyema, cachexia in cases of malignancy, symptoms of left-sided heart failure. Physical examination findings. Inspection and palpation, there is asymmetric expansion and unilateral lagging on the affected side. Reduced tactile fremitus due to the fluid in the pleural space. On auscultation, there is faint or absent breath sounds over the area of effusion. Pleural friction rub. On percussion, there is dullness over the area of effusion. Diagnosis. Imaging can confirm a pleural effusion, but analysis of the pleural fluid via thoracentesis is usually required to establish the underlying etiology. Imaging. Chest X-ray. Very small pleural effusions may not be visible on a chest X-ray, but can be detected on ultrasound. Findings. Typically unilateral, transudative effusions, for example, due to chronic heart failure, are more likely to be bilateral than exudative effusions. Blunting of the costophrenic angle, Free pleural fluid collects in the posterior costophrenic angle first. 
homogeneous density with meniscus-shaped margin. Large effusion. In large effusions, there will be complete opacification of the lung, mediastinal shift, tracheal deviation away from the effusion, space-occupying lesion, lateral decubitus view can help determine whether the fluid is encapsulated or free. Ultrasound. It is very sensitive and can detect fluid amounts as low as 20 ml. Findings. Hyperechoic or anechoic structures in the lower margins of the pleural cavity. Costodiaphragmatic recess. High sensitivity for pleural fluid septations allows for detection of pleural thickening and pleural nodules, commonly used for planning thoracentesis. Chest CT. It is more sensitive than chest x-ray and ultrasound in identifying small pleural effusions but not required for diagnosis. Measurement of fluid density on CT scan may provide a clue to the underlying etiology. Example, hyperattenuation of blood in hemothorax. Consider intravenous contrast if there is any concern for underlying malignancy, for example, heavy asbestos exposure history. Thoracentesis. Aspiration of fluid from the pleural space for diagnostic, example, transidate versus exudate, and or for therapeutic purposes. Indications. Any new unilateral effusion of more than 1 cm on x-ray is an undiagnosed patient, except in patients with obvious signs of typical heart failure or very small effusions in patients with an established diagnosis. History of malignant tumor with effusion of more than 1 cm on x-ray, large effusion with dyspnea and or cardiac decompensation. Treatment. Treat underlying condition, example, loop diuretics for acute congestive heart failure, antibiotics for pneumonia. Therapeutic thoracentesis to remove fluid. Surgical procedures include tube thoracostomy for recurrent pleural effusion or urgent drainage of infected or loculated effusions. Video assisted thoracoscopic surgery. Video assisted thoracoscopic surgery. A minimally invasive surgical method used for diagnosis and treatment of various thoracic pathologies. Indications are collection of histologic samples in malignant effusions, pleural biopsy, drainage of paranemonic effusions that cannot be sufficiently controlled by tube thoracostomy. Drainage of pleural empyma. Pleurodeses. Chemical or surgical obliteration of the pleural space. Indication is recurrent malignant effusions or effusions that do not respond to drugs. Example, diuretics or antibiotics. Technique is chemical or surgical pleurodeses. Indwelling pleural catheter, especially for recurrent malignant pleural effusions. Patients with recurrent chylothorax or recurrent malignant effusions may require pleuroperitoneal shunts.